All my drones have a special inbuilt feature to them, Find Water. I've tried in Betaflight to remove the feature as well as some CLI commands to get rid of it. And just at the randomest corner of the band though, when my quad crashes, it will somehow find a manhole or a river I didn't see before to just dive into. I'm here to share all I know about FPV drones interactions with water and let's just see what we can salvage out of all of this. So the most important thing about quad recovery is if the drone is underwater, it's not on fire. I had to learn this the hard way because the first time I went underwater, I just took a, two sticks and fished the quad out and it started sparking, smoking, hissing. And what was happening there is the power is still pushing in towards the positive and ground leads. So it was short circuiting like crazy. The only reason the fire stopped is because the plus pad of the ESC has been completely burnt out. So from then on, whenever I did quad recovery underwater, I just make sure to reach in to the water while it's still underwater. I unplug the XT60 before pulling it out. So what I essentially pull out is a bunch of wet chips. And that's just an anecdotal proof that you don't have to worry about being electrocuted by touching the leads of your quad or reaching your hand underwater. Now first we talk about the action camera. I only had experience with the GoPro Hero 9 and 10. As long as the battery bay is locked tight, things should be fine. The only thing you don't want is for water to go into the circuit board. Uh, so open the battery bay, remove the battery, I'll take the hair dryer and just dry it as much as I can for a while. And once it's presumably right, you can plug in your battery and test if it still works. Next, we step into what we do with the LiPo. We want to dry the LiPo as much as we can. And the best way to do that is to cut open the skin of the lipo, expose the cells so that it's able to dry fully. Because if you don't cut it out, the water might still accumulate these things. If you want to dry with a hair dryer, I say don't do too high of a heat because lipos are very sensitive to heat as well. And if you don't want to deal with the stresses you have, I would say destroy it via discharge. Your balance charger should be able to bring a lipo down to zero volts so that you can dispose of it responsibly. And now we look at the drone unit. I've crashed in many environments and most of these environments have dirt or gunk in them. An abandoned factory, their drainage system looks is fucking nasty man. Especially like if you're digging it out with a stick and you're also stirring the dirt up and it'll get all over the thing. First step I would take is to just run it under as high of a pressure of water. Clean every corner that you can reach water into and run it through your method of drying, whether it be the hair dryer or run a fan through it in high speed. After a little while of drying, I will actually just start removing things, remove the props, remove all of the screws, try to un just unwire everything from the circuit board. During this teardown process, your two best friends are isopropyl alcohol as well as electronic contact cleaner. So I will be very generous to spray the contact cleaner as well as dab isopropyl alcohol onto it and then use a brush and then brush the electronics as much as possible. What's happening is the contact cleaner is basically getting dirt and junk out of your quad while the isopropyl alcohol is also cleaning it but at the same time it is drying away the water that cannot be seen with the naked eye within the components. Now when it comes to motors and uh, going underwater the only problem is that when gunk gets into the motors and you need to clean it out because the motors are not connected to the ESC as DC because we're using brushless motors, so I believe it's AC. I have another video that I'll link over here for my process of uh, repairing as well as cleaning motors. But in short, what you need to do is to run it through water, brushing it thoroughly, cleaning as much gunk out of the way as possible, then bring it to dry but please do not use isopropyl alcohol or contact cleaner because your motors have this bearing oil in them that you don't want to get rid of. And then after drying, you should be able to assemble it and still use. Like for example, these motors have been underwater and I'm still using them to this day and it's still smooth. No problems. Now going through the individual components, let's start with the ESC and what to look out for. This larger MOSFETs on both sides. If you can see here, it looks as if a pin has penetrated this specific MOSFET. If you were to solder in motors, best case scenario, the motor tool just won't spin. 
but worst case scenario, it might smoke your motor. So that's another indication that you should just throw the ESC away. And now we take a look at flight controllers. Now this is a flight controller attached to the the Hanam Bunya ESC, and you can see some scorch marks by the JSC. This part of the flight controller is the first point of contact with the ESC. These are the ground and, and VBAT pads. So it comes over here and it does have a fail safe of uh, voltage regulation. So as we can see, the five volt pads and the nine volt pads are not compromised. On a less dramatic short circuit, these two pins at the bottom over here are slightly dark and it's compromised. So instead I did a workaround and connected the VBAT to get power from the ESC. And then I can just use this other side of the JSD to plug in for motor and whatnot. Now these two components are the most important of the quadcopter. It is the authority of all the quads movement and the control of it. So when looking at these two components, if let's just say the ESC is compromised while the flight controller is okay, you could consider dumping the ESC and buying a new one. But if you do that, you got to make sure that the JST pins of this side and the JST pins that connects to the ESC matches the pad labeling. But I've mixed plenty of brands of ESC versus flight controller with no problem. So you can give that a try. So next we look into the other components. The air unit is built like a fucking tank. It can take water and still come out of it like a champ. I don't have anything to say about it. It's just DJI has done witchcraft to their electrical components. From all the four times I went underwater, the air unit has always survived without compromise. But for those of you who are still flying analog, something like the Rush FPV, which has the metal casing on top, during the drying process, I'd recommend you to remove that metal casing to expose the chips, run it through some isopropyl alcohol as well as contact cleaner. And from my experience, whenever an analog VTX goes underwater, it would come out never performing well. So better that you just buy a new analog VTX. And finally, receiver. I fly Crossfire as well as Express LRS in my fleet. And Crossfires are also quite well built. There's also a safety net that the Crossfire is at the 5 volt pad. So that the short circuiting of the VBAT is most likely to not compromise that component. And some of the crossfires I used till today has been underwater before and made it out alive. So in terms of putting the whole quad back together, be cautious and at every step, do a test so that you don't end up screwing everything else. Then you can begin by soldering in one motor and then test the power again. After that, I'll plug in the GSD to the flight controller and then plug in and see if the flight controller lights up. And at this point, you can maybe test the motor by spinning it up in beta flight. Very carefully test one by one and then all together. And then I would solder in the receiver and then test power again. And then the VTX and camera and then test power again. Basically step by step being very careful to test as you go. If you verify everything is okay, then you can take it out for a test flight. The first arming, you should move it very far away from you and then only arm with props on. Increase the throttle a little bit, maybe a line of sight flying, land the quad, check the motor temperature, try to touch the motors a little bit, and then uh, just do a heat test with your motors. If everything is fine, then try giving it a smooth flight followed by a rippy flight, and then see how it reacts. So take your time to just experiment on the quad, replace the parts that need replacing, and then hopefully you'll manage to salvage some parts of the quad and treat the quad with some skepticism because it's never gonna fly perfect again. I wish you luck on salvaging some parts of your quad to keep flying. Thanks for watching.